And what we have here is a classic mechanics question involving, well, it'll, it's just involving forces and contact forces right now, but in a moment, um, in this in this thought experiment, they pull block one out quickly, and we have to determine the acceleration as block two comes down, and 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 if block three will accelerate also, and stuff like that. But let's just take it one step at a time. So it's just contact forces and forces now, but it turns into what's known as an Atwood machine. And um, let's get going, so we can you know try to be as quick as possible with this. Block one is resting on the floor with block two at rest on top of it. Block three at rest. Every block is resting. They're all just resting, right? On a smooth table with negligible friction. So block three is on one of those magical tables that has no friction. It's attached to block two by a string that passes over a pulley as shown above. And the string and the pulley have negligible mass. Um, and so, so off we go. I put, a, I put a mini picture of it right here. So when we draw the forces on block one, we can do a quick look up here, right? On the dot that represents block one, draw and label the forces, not components, exerted on block one. Each force must be represented by distinct arrows starting on pointing away from the dot. Draw the relative lengths of all arrows to reflect relative magnitudes of forces. All right, let's look up here. Block one, what's pushing? or pulling on block one. Gravity. Gravity, for sure. Always a good starting point. All right, so I'm gonna go to a nice beautiful color here like that one there. Okay. So we've got gravity down, we've got gravity down and I'm gonna go with, um, I guess I'll go with, I've got my, I've got a double arrow head. Hold on a second here. Gravity's down. I'm going to go two units down. You'll see why in a second. Um, what about upward forces on block one? Or, or how about another downward force? Are there any more downward forces on block one besides gravity? Block two. Yeah, block two is pushing down on block one. Good. Block two is, so it's a contact force. I would call it a normal force or F, F normal, right? And I'm just going to draw that one unit long. So I've got, I've got sort of two units of gravity, arbitrary units. I've got two units of weight. I've got one unit of push down from the block above. Um, but clearly block one is not accelerating. Everything's at rest. Block one is just sitting on the floor. What's pushing up? Block one, what's pushing up? And how long should I draw the arrow? Contact force, I heard somebody say. And how long should that arrow be? One unit, two units, or three units long? It's the same as the contact force on it. Wait, um, must be three because it's not moving. Be three because it's not, it's not accelerating, guys, right? Listen, the, the total downward force on one must be equal to the total upward force on one. That is to say the net force must be zero. Sigma F has to be zero, otherwise there will be an acceleration. So if I have one unit pushed down from above and two units of push down, pull down from gravity, I've got three arbitrary units of force downward, well, if there's three units of force down, there must be one, two, three units of force up from the floor. You know, a way to think about this is, is like this. If this block, if big block number one weighs two pounds, then there's two pounds of gravity. And block number two weighs one pound, then there's one pound. So, the, so, so this block one is pushing down on the floor with, with its own weight plus the weight of block two, which is two pounds plus one pound, there'd be three pounds down on the floor. If there's three pounds down on the floor and it's not accelerating through the floor, the floor must be pushing up with three pounds. So in this scenario, I've got three units down and three units up for no net force. 
Block two, same stuff. Block two. Tell me some forces on block two. Tension. Tension is up. I'm just going to go, I don't know, two. Two units. I, it says draw and label these. The last one I didn't label, did I? Tension, tension. I'm just going to write, I'm just going to write tension. That's the name of that force. All right, there's a tension force up. What else is up? Is two pushing on one? So one's pushing on two. So one's pushing on two. All right, so going back to here, maybe a different color. One's pushing on two. So, you know, we just have to, we just have to draw these things, some, you know, some arbitrary length. And so I'm going to call that one there. I'm going to call that one um, contact um, of con the way we do it is like this. We would call it we would call it force normal. Is what we would call it force force normal. And then we we subscript it like this. We say um, force normal, and um, that's the the force of one on two. The force no no the force on two force on the force on two by one. But you can just write normal. That's fine. You don't have to do two by one. That's that comes later usually, but that's okay. So I've got I've got a, a normal force from one. I've got a tension force also. My tension force is a little bit long. Hey, I'm back. Okay, this is frustrating. Let me go back here, back here, back here, back here. I'm trying to be quick about this. I don't know if I'm still recording. Yeah, I'm still recording. Okay, so I've got tension up and normal up. You know, block two has the string pulling up and block one is pushing up. What else is pulling down or pushing down on block two? Begins with the G, ends with the gravity. 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 <laughs> And if there's three units up, same argument as before, there's three units down. So, so I've got three units downward of, of gravitational force. I've got three total upward units of force uh, between tension and contact. And so unit two, block two rather, has the same force up on it as it does down on it, so it doesn't go anywhere. And there, there's, um, what they're looking for you to recognize here is just that. That if the system is not, if, if, or any block, not just the system, but if the block is not accelerating, the upward force has to be equal, total upward force has to equal total downward force. They're looking for you to sum these vectors, even though they're arbitrary units, they're looking for you to sum these vectors and make it known to the reader that you've got, you've got the same amount of force up as you do downward, same with the previous one. All right, let's keep cracking here, try to be quick. Block one is removed without disturbing block two. Consider the scenario where M3 of block three is greater than the mass of block two without using any equation to make a claim about whether the motion of block three in terms of balance or unbalanced forces, um, about the motion of block three. So, so going back to here, guys, this is a frictionless table. So now they're asking if this is a lot of mass and this is a little bit of mass, and we quickly get rid of block one, right? We quickly get rid of block one. Even if this is really massive, will it still accelerate? This is a frictionless table. Yes. Yes, even if a fly breathed on it, it would accelerate if it's frictionless. Even if, even if this block had the mass of the sun, two times 10 to the 30 kilograms, even if this block was as massive as the sun, if a fly pushed on it, it would accelerate. Not very much, that's for sure. But, but if, there's, if there is an unbalanced force, there is an acceleration, period. Now, if it's very- Is there low, friction in space? Well, we're not in space, we're on a frictionless table. But to answer I, your question- No, but you said it breathed on the sun, like would it accelerate? Right, yes, it would. But I said if this block had the mass of the sun, if this block had some incredible mass, it still would accelerate even if a fly breathed on it, if this is a frictionless table, right? And so, so, so 
So block two, you know, we move block one out of there is even though block two is less massive than block three, will it accelerate? Yep. It will. So consider the scenario. Yes. If there is an unbalanced force, if there is an unbalanced force on any mass, it will accelerate. If the mass is large, the acceleration will be small. If the mass is small, the acceleration will be larger. Right. Um, block three will accelerate because there will be only a force of tension on the x-axis. There is no friction. Uh, the block three will accelerate because there's a force of tension on the x-axis. There's no friction. So there does exist an unbalanced force. And you could invoke Newton's second law here, F equals MA. Derive the accelerant factor. Okay, that's what we're going to do here. Derive an, an equation for the acceleration of block three for any arbitrary values and, dis and express your answers in terms of M3, M2, and physical constants. Okay. Well, believe it or not, you and I have done this before except our blocks were hanging on either side of a pulley and we were looking at what's called an Atwood's machine. Okay, so it's the same thing. We have to go, in fact, we're in pretty good shape here. Well, we didn't do block three. We didn't do a force diagram for block three. We have to, you know, let me, um, I'm gonna go to a blank page here and quickly do this. I've got this block, I've got a string, I've got a string, it goes over a pulley, I'm just gonna draw it down, it goes over a pulley, goes down to a lesser block, and I've got a little pulley, oops, um, Right there, right? And so, and this is on a frictionless table here, right? This is on a frictionless table. Here it is. Uh, here it is. It's on a frictionless table. And I guess that thing's floating in the air. Nope, it's on a stick. Yeah, pull it on a stick. There we go. Right, so, so if this is frictionless, even if this is tiny and this is huge, there will still be an acceleration. But I hope you recall that what we have to do here is we have to set coordinate systems and write two equations because we want the acceleration of the system. And so for this block up here, I'm going to call right positive. I'm going to call right positive. For this block here, I'm going to call right positive. And for this block here, do you remember my trick? This block is accelerating downward. Should I do downward as positive? Coordinate system. Sure. Okay. Oh boy. Now what? Okay. Um, okay. Somebody, I think Andre says sure. So he wants to call down negative and up positive. Okay. Now I want the acceleration. That's what we're after. A equals question mark. Right. Well, what I have to do, this is block three up here, right? That's three and this is block two. Right. Now you have to write an equation for block three and for block two and then combine them. Okay. So block three, we didn't do forces on, but while it's sliding, the sum of the forces, forces. So here's block, I'm just going to write a three above it. So I don't have to keep subscripting three. Right. So, so three, the force on three, is equal to m times a. What is, 
what is the sideways force? I'm talking about x-axis motion. I'm talking about x-axis motion here. What are, what is or are the x-axis forces on three? Tension. Tension equals M times A. And that's, uh, this is my better subscript, otherwise we'll get confused. M, M3 A, right? There's an equation. There's only one force on three on, sideways, on the sideways axis, but, 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 but block two, block two is different, right? So block two, block two, right? The sum of the forces or F net, since I don't have a sigma handy, F net equals M two A, okay? F net equals M two A, okay? So um, let's sum the forces on two. Name the forces on two people. We just did it here. Oh boy, I've got to go way back. Gravity and tension. I'm going back, yeah, it's just gravity and tension, right? Um, right, so F net, let's sum them. So, so Andre wants to use up as positive, so I'm gonna say tension minus uh, gravity, which is M3A, uh, sorry, M3G. M, G, us M2, isn't it? Tension minus M2G equals M two A. Does that look okay? Yeah. Okay. There's a mistake. Does anybody see the mistake? All right. This, which direction is two going to accelerate, upwards or downwards? Down. Clearly. And down is positive or negative? Negative. Negative. We need a negative sign there if we're going to call down negative. Does that jog your memory about what I said with coordinate systems? Yeah. I like to put positive in the direction. If I know the direction of acceleration, I think it's a good idea to put the direction of the acceleration in positive. You don't have to, but if you don't, you might make the mistake that we just made, right? Which is you might forget to call M A negative. So let's so let's 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 make this positive because it's going to go downward. Let's call then this becomes uh, M G is positive, and tension is negative because it's up. Right? Either way is going to work. But what I'm saying to you guys, if you call down negative, you've got to call your acceleration here negative. Right. I'm in the habit of if I know the acceleration, the direction of the acceleration, I put it as positive and then, okay, gravity's down, so it's positive, tension is up, so it's negative, and, um, and it's going to accelerate downward, which is positive. Now, I've got two valid statements about this system. There's one of them, and there's the other one right there. That one, sorry, that one right there, right? I'm going to, what is tension? It's M3A. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this equation right here. I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to put tension in there. I'm going to say M2G minus tension. What's tension? M3A equals M2A, right? And then I've, I, I'm, I can add this one over and collect my A's. So I get, I get M, I get M2G right, equals um, M, uh, is that still my memory? M3A, right? Plus M, oops, plus M2A. Right? And I can factor that A out. And I get, I get M2G equals A 
M three plus M two. Oops. And I divide, then I get my final equation right here. A equals where am I at? M two G over quantity M three plus uh, M two. And that's your answer right there. So are the, um, the two masses accelerating at the same rate? That's right. Cause they're tied together. Yeah. Yeah. They're so tied together. Did you, Oh, that's your good. So that's why I was able to collect my A's because the A, the A, the, the rate at which three is accelerating right here, M3A, that A is the same as my, the rate at which, you know, if this one's accelerating downward at whatever, th three meters a second faster every second, then this one is accelerating to the right at that same rate. So A is A, and that's why I can factor it out and get a single A. Now, let me give you a clue. Let me, so you've run across this before. I do recall doing this with your Atwood's machine, and then we tested it. But I want I I I I to say something here. Well, first of all, you get just as many points for doing all those free body diagrams as you do for this again. So just be sure to do those arrows carefully and clearly. But secondly, look what this is. Ha look what's happening here. Look at our answer. I want to I want to tell you about a, a student I had, a, you know, probably five or seven years ago now. His name was Cole, and he um, he had an Atwood's machine problem on his AP test. And I remember very clearly he got full marks for the problem, and and it said derive an equation for the acceleration of block three or the acceleration of the system or some such. And he did not do any of this, he did not do the derivation at all. But he did remember this. He did remember that. He remembered this and he just wrote this down and they gave him full credit. And I wanna show you a really easy way to remember this. Look, guess what rate the system will, if we pull block one out, guess what rate it will accelerate at? Well, A is, a is equal to F over M, right? This is, this is A, this is Newton's second law, equals F over M, okay? So the acceleration, this is, all you have to remember is Newton's second law. What rate will it accelerate at? F over M. Well, what's causing the force? What, what force causes the acceleration of the system? Well, the weight of number two. So there it is, Mg of number two. The weight is the F. The weight of the one that's being pulled downward is the F. And, and what mass is being accelerated? Well, that one is, and that one is. That's being accelerated, and that one's being accelerated. So the mass is mass two plus mass three. So, so the acceleration is force over mass. The force is the weight that's being pulled upon by the Earth, and the mass is just how much the system's mass is. So the answer is mg of the one being pulled on divided by the total mass of the two things that are accelerating. So Cole remembered that, Cole remembered that, that in this type of situation, the acceleration is the force, which is the force on this guy, mg, divided by the mass, which mass? Well, both are accelerating, so it's total mass. Weight divided by total mass. Remember, remember number one's not here anymore. Number one has been... Number one has been pulled out. That's not there. That's been yanked out and number two is falling. Right? Okay, so we just did this on that other page. We just did that. And describe, uh, describe in what way your answer is consistent or not consistent with your claim in part B1. Well, we said, we said block three would accelerate even if block two was less. We said block three would accelerate, right? So even if even if this even if this number got big, or that number got small, it's still just a number. It still have you still have a force divided by some number. You still have a number here, right? No matter what. So I would say it's consistent. I would say the equation shows. Um, the equation. 
shows that um, that that for any value of m two or m three, there will be an unbalanced force causing an acceleration. Okay, on the axis below, sketch the graphs of the velocity and the acceleration of block two after it's been removed. Okay, well that's pretty straightforward stuff. Watch this, it starts at zero and it accelerates. So the velocity goes up. The acceleration is some value, right? Um, uh, a block two, right? We call downward positive, so I'm showing a positive velocity. Right? The acceleration is downward. We call it downward positive. The acceleration is the same the whole time. Right? It's, 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 it's accelerating at some rate. It's accelerating at this rate here. And while it's accelerating, while that is falling and that's being pulled to the right, that's not changing. That's not changing. That's not changing. The A stays the same the whole time. Just like when you drop a rock, it speeds up, right? When you drop a rock, it speeds up the whole time. But the acceleration is always 10 meters per second faster every second. The acceleration is always the same, but it's speeding up. Okay, we're getting there. Two identical blocks, or one of them is sliding toward the other one. The center of mass of the system is right there. And as this one slides over here and, and slams into B, um, the center of mass moves to the, the spot between them. Two identical blocks are on a horizontal surface. There's negligible friction, so there's no external force, um, as shown in figure one. Block A is initially moving towards B with a speed of VA, and block B is initially at rest. Figure two shows the blocks in contact as they collide a short time later. In both figures, the lo location of the COM is indicated by the X. Right? That's the center of mass here. But then since A moves more to the right, the center of mass moves more to the right. And when they are hitting each other, since they're identical, the center of mass is at their geometric center. Okay. On each of the dots, which represents the blocks, while they're in contact, draw a single arrow to indicate the direction of the net force. Okay. We can do that. This block here, what is the direction of the force on it? When it, it, it hits block B, what is the direction of the force on A? Is it I want to say right because it's so exciting, but would it be left because the, the block B is pushing back on block A with some block, block B is pushing forward. back on block A. Mm -hmm. Block B is pushing back on block A. The four, if A hits B, B hits A, right? So if B hits A, so A it's gonna be left. So it's gonna be left. And the other, and this is block B, block B is being hit to the right. And, and you should draw those arrows the same length. I wouldn't worry about it to the nearest millimeter or something, but don't do something like this and be quick, like, oh, that one gets hit that way and that one gets hit that way. Don't do that. That shows that you don't understand Newton's third law, right? If block B hits block A, then block A hits block B. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction force, right? So, whoa. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't do that. Draw the arrows about the same length. Nobody's gonna bust out a ruler, but they're gonna use their eyeballs and say, is that about the same as that? Does this kid understand that forces occur in pairs if A hits B, B hits A equally and oppositely, right? During the time that the blocks are in contact, center of mass is speeding up, slowing down, or staying the same. Huh. Okay, you know what causes, while things are in contact with each other, do you know what could cause their center of mass? What could cause their center of mass to change would be external forces. If, if some big old hand came from the outside and gave them a push, then there'd be an external force messing, messing this up. And, and at that instant, 
the center of mass would be moving off to the left if it got hit to the left by a hand or something like that. But, but if there are no external forces, then A pushes B, B pushes equally back on A, and if they start going away from each other after the collision, the center of mass stays right between them. So, so here, you would say the center of mass stays the same. Right? During the collision, the center of mass stays the same. And um, the, the, the law of physics you want to invoke here is just that if, if no external forces are acting, if no external forces are acting on the system, the center of uh, the center of mass, um, the center of mass will have the same speed as the system. Okay, something just like that. You want to you want to um, invoke external forces. This one here is easier than you think. The surface is tilted to an angle of 37 degrees from the horizontal. The blocks are each given a push. So the instance shown, they're moving towards each other. Okay, I'm gonna do this really quickly here. I'm gonna draw a dotted line so I can draw some forces. Let's just do B. So here's, here's an x-axis. I thought I changed the color, sorry. Here's an x-axis, here's a y-axis. All right, there are some forces right there, guys. I just changed that one to purple. There you go. Um, there are some forces there. Oh, sorry, there's some coordinates there, X and Y. And, and so B got pushed up the ramp, C got pushed down the ramp. Uh, sorry, B got pushed up the ramp, A got pushed down the ramp, and each at 0.35 meters per second. Um, there, let me just say it out loud. There is an external force on the system. There is an external force on the system and it's gravity, okay? There's an external force on the system, it's called gravity. Um, sorry about that. There's an external force on the system and it's gravitational force. So there's gravity right there, okay? Is any of that gravity on the x-axis? Oops, is any of that gravity on the x-axis indeed about this much of that gravity is on the x-axis. Now, if this is 37 degrees, this is, uh, if this is 37 here, then this is 37 here, right? And so then this, let me just go with a dotted line again. Maybe a slightly different color. Shoot, I did that. So here we go. So, so that's, meant to, that's meant to intercept that arrowhead right there. This angle right here, this angle right here is also 37 degrees right there. That's 37 degrees. If that's 37 degrees, that's 37. So um, let's see, the hypotenuse is mg. The hypotenuse is m g. I should probably just type. The hypotenuse is mg. So this right here, the force on this block down the ramp is mg sine theta, right? The force of gravity on the x-axis is mg sine theta. mg sine theta, right, is the amount of force down. And this, you know, I'm not gonna go through the whole same analysis, but we could just literally, we could literally do this. Um, we literally just go like this for the analysis. Oh boy, yeah, well, well we could we do that too. We could put that right there and it's the same exact analysis because they're identical blocks at the same angle, same mass, everything else. So the forces on B are the same as the forces on A. And the force on B down the ramp is mg sine theta. Okay, um, now go to the next page. 
Each block has a mass of 0.2. Calculate the magnitude of the net force on the two block system, right? The net force on the system. This one's being pulled down by mg sine theta. This one's being pulled down by mg sine theta. The system, the system, right? It's important that you get the concept of the system firmly in your head. The system is this whole thing right here. And the system has a net force of mg sine theta plus mg sine theta or simply two mg sine theta. All right, so we go up here and we say, hello, little funny shape. Well, we go up here and we say, the net force on the system is m is two mg sine thetas. All right, each block has mg sine theta acting on it on, while it's on the ramp, acting to accelerate it. It's got the quantity mg sine theta acting to accelerate it. And there's two blocks. So there, there's the two. So let's see if we can do this in our heads. Two times, 0.2 times 10 is two. And two times sine 37, yeah, maybe I can't do that in my head, is one point something. That doesn't help. What's, 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 what's two times sine 37? One point two, no, 1.3. Somebody tell me with a calculator. One point two. It is 1.2. Okay. Um, that's 1.2 Newtons each, right? So, so, so two times that is 2.4. Okay. There's the net force on the system. 2 mg sine thetas is 2.4 newtons. Okay. At the instant shown, the blocks are moving towards each other with the same speed at 0.35. The blocks collide a half a second later. What is the speed of the two block system COM just before the blocks collide? Well, here, the way to think about this is this, right? This, here's the center of mass. This one is speeding up. This one is slowing down as it goes up, right? This one is speeding up because there's a, there's a, a, a 1.2 Newton force on it downwards. This one's slowing down because there's a 1.2 Newton force on it downward. So the center of mass is migrating down the ramp. This is slowing and that's speeding. So a moment later, you know, A will be farther down this way and B won't be as far up as A just came down. The, C, the center of mass will have just shifted downward. And the speed of the center of mass I don't know, it's just, it's just A times T, right? Um, the velocity is, is it accelerated motion? It is. And, um, oh, it's gonna be, what, what do we have to hear? What is the speed of this two block system? See, oh yeah, the speed of the center of mass right at this instant is zero. Do you see that? At this instant in time, the, the speed of the center of mass is zero because this one's coming down at 0.35, this one's going up at 0.35. So, so the center of mass at that moment in time is zero. But a moment later, it's not zero because this number grows and this number gets smaller. So the center of mass starts going this way. Right? And so it's just the summation of the two. And so it will be A times T because it is starting from zero. Okay. So it's going to be some number A times 0 0.5 seconds. But we have to find the acceleration. Well, what's the acceleration? Well, we know what acceleration is. It's net force divided by mass, F net over mass. And we have that whole, we have that. We have 2.4 Newtons acting on a total mass of, what are these things, 0.2 each? So 0.4 kgs, 0.4 kgs. That we can do in our heads, 2.4 over 0.4 is a lot like 24 over four, just six meters per second faster every second. And so that's this number here equals six meters per second squared, six meters per second squared um, times 0 0.5 seconds equals three meters per second. The speed of the two block system 
is three meters, uh, the speed of the center of mass of the two block system is three meters per second, half a second after that picture was taken. Okay. I was so sure I got that wrong as well. Okay, cool. And then I'm back to my extra page that I was using. So we're done. All right, I'm gonna stop this recording here.